I am excited to have with me Dr. Ted Bear of MovieGuide.org. Dr. Ted, it's nice having you on. It is nice, Andrew. Thank you for calling. Thank you for Zooming or whatever you want to call it. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about how Movie Guide actually began. Okay. Well, it's a uh, it's a little bit of a longer story. You know, I grew up in the entertainment industry. My parents were movie stars. My father starred in 62 movies. You can't do that today because they take so long making movies. And his day, they just made them quickly. Uh, 12 of his movies were Westerns. He won a box office award for one of his other movies, which was a musical. My mother starred in some really great movies. She died when I was 13, going on 14. So I went off the deep end and did a lot of bad behavior, really bad behavior, a lot of drugs and other things and salacious activity. And I don't want to tell you because this is, you know, a faith based program. But uh, finally, because my father was very handsome, uh, four women who come to Christ through Billy Graham, one of them had her eye on him, but she wanted him to come to Christ. So she'd take him to Christian events. And he'd take me to protect him. And I'd walk out of the Christian events and say, boy, these people are crazy. And then I became one and I knew they were crazy. But anyway, so uh, one of the women, Audrey Clark, said after months of this uh, going back and forth, she said, why don't you read the Bible and tell me what's wrong with it? Well, you know, because you do this show, that about 60 percent of the people who come to Christ come through reading the Bible so after six months of refusing, you know, I'd gone to Dartmouth and Cambridge and University of Bordeaux and Toulouse and finance five feature films. So I thought mm, reading the Bible was a waste of my time. As I started to read Matthew, God got a hold of my heart. I turned around 100 percent. I went to uh, a main line, what I call a cemetery in New York. It was a seminary and they own the rights to the lion, the witch and the wardrobe. So I helped them with that. I became, they made me president of that organization and we won an Emmy award and we had 37 million viewers. And so, you know, after that, I said, I don't need awards. My father kept winning awards. What I need to do is find out how we transform the industry. I was on a, you know, a mission from God. I'd been transformed. So I wanted to transform the industry. So I heard about the old Protestant film office and inherited those files from George Heimerick. And we started doing uh, the things that the old, during the golden age of Hollywood, there were, when everything was clean, 100% was family films. Uh, there were th three church film offices in Hollywood, one of them the Protestant film office. So we started replicating that work. One was to do reviews of every movie, to do a detailed economic analysis with 150 criteria, including ontology, epistemology. So that became Movie Guide. And then the other is, we meet all the time with top studio execs. And I do a class to help teach young people to um, how to get into the industry. So last year, the best movie of the year on Netflix, uh, which won the spot for nine weeks, uh, I looked at it. It was beautiful, very Christian, very well made. And I got to the producer and he'd taken my class in 2015. And he's now head of a a division of a major studio, one of the four big studios. So, and we had another guy who took the class and then suddenly he rewrote his script and Ron Howard gave him a two picture deal. And so we have a litany of, uh, of positive things that have been happening. We can always hope there's gonna be more and we pray about that every morning. The staff gets together and prays that we can have more impact, but we've seen the number of movies with Christian content increase dramatically. So we're following a pattern uh, inspired in many ways, but also uh, from the old church film offices that has been successful in the past and seems to be getting successful, except you always have new challenges uh, like some of the wokeness in the current industry. And I've got to show them that that doesn't make money. So I meet with them and I show them that. And right now we're sending out this exhaustive report to the entertainment industry, which I could only do through Movie Guide uh, by collecting all that information. We also teach parents how to teach their kids to be media wise. When I was head of, putting myself through seminary, I was head of the TV department at City University of New York uh, TV Center. And what I did is there were 60 professors who got together, actually 62, and developed the first media literacy course in 1978. 
and now we baptize that it's very christian and i see every day like i was quoted uh today academia since are you the ted bear that was quoted so a lot of schools are using that information and we're trying to get parents to understand because the most important person in hollywood is the person who goes to movies if they support a bad movie uh, it's going to do well uh, like Lightyear, if they support a good movie like DC Super League of Pets, then it'll do well. So you have a choice every weekend, and every weekend five movies come out. And if you go to movieguide.org, you find out which ones are good. And if you need to teach your kids to be media wise, that's what we do. You know, it seems like there's a, as you said, there's <clears throat> a lot of wokeness going on in the film industry today. I mean, we see in Disney's Lightyear. I mean, it's promoting homosexuality. How can we as Christians take a stand against this? Well, it'd be nice if we did take a stand. You know, there's 125 million people go to church every week. Now that's down from 165 million, but there are only uh, 17 to 25 million people who go to movies. So, you know, when AFA and others and said, this is what's happening at Disney, Yesterday, it came out that Disney earned more money than ever. The parks had more visitors than ever. The movies were doing better than ever. And now they have more subscribers than Netflix. Well, if the church actually took a stand, none of that would be true. So all we can do is put out the information. And you're doing that right now. Thank you. And I can't understand with all of the pedophile arrests they did in March arch and everything else at disney why people would take their children to a place that was so dangerous and i have friends that worked at disney i was just uh, having lunch with a former head of disney when it was the good old days and he restored it to the walt disney brand of being pro-family he was there for 27 years and we just you know we we have to this, that's why i said the most important person is the person who goes to movies or goes to the theme park or goes to you know, we can yell and scream and everything else, but you have the power. You have the power not to go. And the people listening to you and watching you have the power not to go. And I have friends who tell me, I just saw this terrible program the other day. I said, well, you know, you don't have to watch it. You can actually <laughs> find out ahead of time by going to movie guides. You don't have to watch this terrible program. So somehow we've got to make the connection that when they go to a movie, they're voting, like voting at the ballot box for you know, you know, whoever, Gavin Gruesome in, oh, Newsom in California or whoever it happens to be. But, you know, if you vote for him, you're going to get terrible government. And you're making that choice when you vote. So you've got to make a difference when you go and watch movies. And if we did that, because there's so many Christians, but, you know, Andrew, if you want to be honest about it, um, there are about 4% of the Christian people who call themselves Christians are really doctrinaire, concerned, you know, biblically based Christians. And you've got a lot of mainline churches. You know, the biggest denomination is Catholic. 62 million people go to the Catholic church. Uh, I don't want to disparage anybody. And then there's Lutherans and then they're Baptists. And unfortunately, they don't all live their values. You know, they go to church on Sunday and then they curse on Monday and then they cheat on or IRS, which the IRS is going to get them on on Tuesday, and they get angry at their wife on Wednesday. So we just have to live a Christian life. If you want to solve the problem, you ask me how to solve it. That's it. It's up to your listeners and your viewers. So do you think the faith-based film industry is growing today? Well, it is growing. And, you know, it's there's always been, there's a couple of you know, misunderstandings. There's been a faith-based industry for a long time. In 1897, that was a long time ago, there was the first uh, nativity story. In 1898, there were three, two nativity stories and a, uh, a passion story. Uh, by the 1910s, there were a lot of Christian movies. In the 40s, you had cathedral films and the organization I worked with was a major force when we did the line the witch in the wardrobe and the lutherans did some really good programming in the 60s and the 70s and then there's always been hollywood making big movies with christian content uh year 2000 we put together a list of all the christian movies it was over 200 
you know, you've got the passion of the Christ. You've got, you know, King of Kings is my favorite in the 1920s. You've had these for a long time. Uh, the people that I love, like the Kendrick brothers, Alex Kendrick uh, was my radio engineer for a couple of times and all that. They're making really good movies, but they got to break above what Christians are making. Hollywood uh, finances a movie for $104 million. Christians finance a movie for a couple hundred thousand. And any child, do you have children, Andrew? No, I don't. Okay, well, any child can recognize the difference between uh, an animated Christian film about animals in a barn talking about the birth of Jesus and a Hollywood movie, which makes over a hundred million dollars. So we've got to get our production quality up. We've got to get our, so that's why I teach people how to succeed in Hollywood without losing your soul. I want them to make movies that make money. I had one guy from Texas, richest man in Texas, who took the class and his movie and made only a million seven. And I said, you didn't succeed. You didn't do the right thing. He said, oh, I don't care about money. I said, well, money is just a measure of how many people are watching your movie. And um, if it's a million seven at the box office at $10 a ticket, that's 170,000 people in a country of 360 million people. You certainly didn't reach anybody with that movie except your friends. So I've got it. I'm trying to get Christians to make movies that are blockbusters, you know, like uh, Tom Cruise's movie, Top Gun 2, Maverick, um, is now over a billion dollars worldwide, and it's just beat Titanic. I want every Christian to make movies that beat Titanic, please. You know, there's been a lot of great Christian movies out there, too, like War Room. I mean, oh, I love those movies. Yeah, I'm not putting them down. So what putting... would be some of your favorites that have recently came out? Well, there's there's always a flood of those. I mean, you've already mentioned War Room. Most of the Kendrick Brothers movies, I uh, can say that I like. I like uh, the Irwin Brother. You know, I can only imagine. And, you know, they're doing one good movie after another. And the Jesus Revolution, which hasn't come out yet. Uh, one of the people at Lionsgate, which distributes the Irwin Brothers, who's Jewish, who's the top distributor there. He said, you know, I watched this as such a great film that if I had spent 10 more minutes watching it, I would have come to Christ. So there's there's a lot of good people making movies. There are other, also other people that are, you know, not quite good enough and they need to get their, their game going better. So what really inspired you to keep going in the film industry? Well, you know, I was trapped here and I love the film industry. <laughs> and... Uh, you know, I grew up here. My father was a star. I grew up on Broadway. I'm a Broadway brat. I'm a Hollywood brat. I know how to talk to these people. It's my home. It's my family. They're people I know there. And actually, um, you know, I thought about it this morning because I got an interview from Christian Post. I'll just tell you. And it always scares me to talk to Christians. Um, and the reason it scares me is, is usually they don't have a good understanding of how the industry works. You know, let's say, let, let me just give you this. The industry releases, uh, I may have said, 150, 250 films a year, uh, 52 weeks in a year. That's five movies a week. It's a law of supply and demand. If they release six movies, nobody makes money. If you release five, one of them might make money and the rest of them will do uh, not as well. And so they only release five movies a year. Uh, streaming, you know, everybody thinks, oh, streaming is releasing. There were only 179 movies last year. And uh, the Writers Guild of America a couple of years ago says that they get about 300,000 scripts a year being registered with the Writers Guild. That's protection. But there are three million projects looking to be made into movies. So you've got three million people every year writing scripts to be made into movies, but you're only down to about 350 movies a year. And of those... Only 40% of from the industry. So what people usually look at, they don't look at the 40% from the industry, which have to be broad audience, although they may have, you know, some, and usually when we started, they had only one movie with positive Christian content. Last year, it was over two thirds of the movie because they know that that's a big audience. You know, a couple of years ago, Captain America was asked, they look like gods. And he says, you know, I know what God looks like. It doesn't look like that. And Superman goes to a, you know, Lutheran church to take a leap of faith. They put those in with other elements 
you know, like romance for women. They put them in with action for teenagers. All of that is put together consciously in order to grab all those audiences. You have to have a, you know, an Oriental character. My wife was Argentine. You've got to have a Spanish speaking character. You want that whole range. And they've added to that some LGBTQ characters. But all they're trying to do is reach everybody with that. So you have to understand how many films are coming from Hollywood. What are you judging? And uh, how many films are coming from the Christian world? In the old days, the you know the independents were mainly making you know um, some of the bad films that are out there, but most of them zombie films and horror films. They never do that well, but they do well for one weekend. Um, but now, you know, the Christians are making more and more films, so it's great. That's awesome. So what is the ultimate goal of Movie Guide? Well, Movie Guide and we, is a DBA, doing business as, for the Christian Film Intelligence Commission, which is a DBA for the old church film offices. We inherited the files from the Protestant Film Office for Good News Communications. And um, there are over 1,200 lobbying groups in Hollywood um, just for example, when I, the UCLA called them all together, we had a big meeting, UCLA University of California in, in LA, and there was uh, like 20 LGBTQ groups, 20 Muslim groups, 10 Jewish groups. We were the only Christian group in it. <laughs> so, you know, and the, the, the Marine Corps has an office, the Pepsi has an office, Coca-Cola has an office. All these people are lobbying Hollywood just the way people lobby uh, Washington, D.C. So one thing we try to do, especially through our detailed economic analysis of the box office, is reach executives and talk to them. And we do that through our Movie Guide Awards. We have the top people from the industry who come year after year. Everybody likes to receive an award. And we get uh, interviews with over 200 of them if you look at movieguide.org. So we're always working with the industry. And the second thing, so number one, we're redeeming media. How? One, by reaching the industry. And two, by helping parents make wise choices. So that, that covers what we're doing. That's our mission, redeem the media. If we could just get parents to care about what their kids are watching. So Andrew, if you could figure that out, um, I'll you know, we'll hire you immediately. Yes, sir. Well, Dr. Ted, it has been an honor to talk with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for being patient with me. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.